So for part three, welcome in everybody. Part three, if you've missed part one and part two, check out the links in the description below. Make sure you go check out those so you can be caught up with everything that we have gone through so far. Um, we are going to continue on today uh, in the Twitch dashboard uh, with the content section. Um, this is the video producer, the collections, the clips, and the copyright claims manager. All very in-depth and a lot of detail that we need to cover. So we're not going to dally-dally, shilly-shally. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay, so for part three, we're going to cover the content section, video producer, collections, clips, and copyright claims manager. A lot of information. Let's get going. First thing we're going to do is click on video producer. Now, you will notice there's nothing here. That's because my robot account has never gone live. Um, again, we can bring up our one affiliate one here to show you what this is going to look like. So let me let me go ahead and do that. Here it is. All right. So once you have things here, uh, one streams. Once you've gone live, uh, the video producer is where they're going to be held. So it'll look like this. Okay. Um, but before you go live, you won't have anything here. It'll be there will be nothing. Um, the video producer is basically a way for you uh, to control what is kept on after you end your stream. So with the video producer, you have to have at least one video and then you're going to click on it. It'll show you, you'll see here, it's got a little thumbnail. Uh, it'll show you the title uh, that you used, the date and how long you streamed for, how many active viewers you have, and then the type. There are past broadcasts. And if you're an affiliate, you can actually upload videos. Um, as you can see here, there's the upload option. The non-affiliate does not have that option. Um, so once you're an affiliate, you can upload, and then that type will be here, whether it was a broadcast or an upload. Um, and you can make a highlight of the video here, and I'll explain highlights in just a moment. Or you can click the three little tabs here, and we have a lot of options here. The first one is to edit. We can edit the entire VOD. Uh, the video on demand is what that stands for, so the VOD. Um, you can add it to a collection. You can download the video, uh, which does take quite a while. It has to process, and the longer the video, the longer the process uh, before it even becomes available to download. Um, again, you have the highlight option once again. You can watch it, or you can export it to a service. So if, when you have YouTube connected, um, you can actually upload the VOD directly to YouTube. Um, and then you can unpublish it if you don't want people to be able to find it and see it, and you can delete it. So what happens then when you click on, on highlight or on edit? If you click on it, you'll see it brings us up to a bigger thumbnail. We can actually play the video right here. Um, it is muted by default. You can add a description. You can change the title. Uh, you can change the category, the language, and see who has permissions to see it. So if you want like only your subscribers to have access to a video, uh, a lot of a lot of affiliates have like a subscriber only night. So them and their subs will have access to this video. But once the VOD is up, it's open to everybody unless you come in here and change it to subscribers only. You can change the thumbnail if you like uh, that displays behind the video player. And then it gives you the URL to this video so you can take it and post it wherever you would like. And then of course, save your changes when you're done. You'll notice at the top, we have our different buttons that we can do. We can unpublish it, share it again, add it to a, uh, a collection, which we're gonna cover in just a second, export it back to YouTube or download it. And then the highlight section, the highlight is real quick. I'll show you, it does auto play. It is muted um, by default. Um, but what happens is you have a slider here that you can edit how long you can cut sections out. So like I have my starting soon screen at the beginning of every video. I, I may want to cut that out and say we'll start it after that scene is changed to the game screen. Um, and then something I don't want, you know, I rate out at the end of every uh, video. Maybe I don't want that in the VOD. So we can, you know, close that down 
uh, whatever. You can edit, you can clip, you can delete sections, you can make it the full length, you can zoom it in. Basic, super basic video editing tools right here built into Twitch. Um, to be honest, I don't use them a whole lot. I either upload it right directly to YouTube or I download it to my hard drive and edit it in my professional video editing software. Um, but for those of you that may not have that software or the want to or the desire to learn a whole new program, there are basics right here for you. And then once you have a highlight, you can publish the highlight. Highlights stay forever, which is important, and I'll cover that in just a moment. Um, highlights stay forever, and then uh, the VODs do not. So if you want to create a highlight, do so. The collections. A collection is basically a way to organize and categorize your uh videos so if you do let, let's say for example you stream fortnite and dead by daylight and fall guys right um and maybe you do one each day or and not you know you don't have like a multi-stream so on mondays you do dead by daylight and tuesdays you do fortnite and Thursdays is when you do Fall Guys, you can come in here and actually make a collection for just those videos. So I wanna Fall Guys and I'll create the collection. Um, and then, so here we go, we have it. We can describe it. This is Fall Guys Plays. Save that. Um, we can add videos here. This is not an upload, it's adding existing videos. So once you go live, you will have that option. Um, as you can see, I have no videos because I haven't gone live. Um, but what happens is once you have that collection, and we'll refresh the page to show you, there's the Fall Guys. Um, I can add my videos to this, and then I can give out the URL for this playlist right here and only show just that playlist. So only videos with Fall Guys in it or like in this one, the best headshots, or I can make one. You can make a collection for anything. Um, you can have it be for days of the week, uh, by month. You can have it by category or by tag, or just, hey, this is weird crap that I streamed earlier that you may have missed. It doesn't matter what you call it. Um, and there is no limit. As far as I've been able to tell, I've made up to 35, I think, categories on one account. Um, I don't know if there is an upper limit, but you probably won't reach it because I didn't and I don't see a need to make that many. <laughs> uh, but if you do reach a limit, let me know in the comments below so that I can update this and make sure that people know that there is a limit. But so far, I haven't found one. Um, but basically, it's just a way to, to organize your collection. Now, notice I told you that the VODs do disappear and the highlights do not. VODs, the video on demand, the VODs, only last for 14 days unless you're a Twitch partner. So affiliates, I'm talking to you too. Twitch partners can have their VODs stored up to 60 days. That's two months worth of videos compared to two weeks that everybody else gets. However, there is a way around that. Connect your Amazon Prime account or the Twitch Turbo, if you still do Twitch Turbo, which if you do, Say hi in the comments because I want to get a count. My last count was four. Um, but Amazon Prime, once you've linked that account, you automatically get to store your VODs up to 60 days as well. Whether you're a non-affiliate, an affiliate, a partner, it doesn't matter. If you have an Amazon account, you get the same perk of storage as Twitch partners do. Another reason to connect that account. Also, the Twitch Turbo, they also have that ability uh, as well the videos that you put in here in your collections your vods if you will once you put your vod in a collection it doesn't mean it stays there forever it's still subject to the 14 days or the 60 days once the vod is deleted from twitch it will also be deleted from your collection clips and highlights do not ever get deleted so if you want to keep a short section, a clip, or a bigger section, a highlight. You can have those stick around basically forever. You do have to edit them, give them a name, and, and then store them 
with the video producer or the clips manager, which we're going to cover next. But once you've done that, those will be around forever. But the actual VOD from the entire stream will go away. How long depends on your connection and your status. So let's move on to the clips section now, the content and the clips. Here we have two sections at the top, clips of your channel and clips you've created. <laughs> Uh, it defaults to the clips that you have created. Now, this would be clips of your channel or any channel. Any clip that you have created will be shown right in here. Uh, you can also do clips of my channel, and this will only show clips that are of your channel, regardless of who made them. So any clip that has ever been made from your channel will be displayed here. And we'll look here because I do want to show you what that looks like. Um, so here we have clips that I've created and it'll show you uh, the name that you gave it, what channel it was on, the category of that channel that was playing. So whatever game they were playing, uh, when it was created approximately, not an exact uh, time and date, just how many days ago it was and how many views it has received. Um, if you are to click on it, you'll see it opens up a little mini player where you can watch the clip. You can change the title and then you get a little bit more detailed information like it was created on this day exactly. And it is exactly this long. You still don't have like the time of day it was created, but that really doesn't matter. Um, you can moderate it. If you click on the moderator, uh, you can whoever <laughs> be careful with this because whoever created it and here you are, you know, me uh, uh, clips I've created. So this isn't going to work, but you can time out or ban the user or you can delete all clips from that entire video, which is quite powerful. So try to stay away from that because for example, here was one I created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got nine clips from one video. And if I were to come in here and click delete all clips from that video, all nine of those would be gone. Whether you look at them or not, they're gone. And once they're gone, they're gone. You'd have to go back to that VOD if it's still around and recreate the clip again. So be very careful with that. Um, again, you can delete them individually. You can share them or you can watch them on the clips page, which is where it would save the same place would go here is if you were to click on uh, the link here that shows up on the video player. So the clips of my channel then is the same thing. It's just clips of your channel, though regardless of who created them, whether it was you or a viewer. So here's one that was created by a viewer. And then, you know, it gives you the same information, the title, but you notice you have to go into uh, the moderate to change titles and things like that. Uh, unlike a VOD where you do it right on the player. So same thing. Um, you can also search for a specific clip uh, by category. So if I wanted, oh, I was playing Phasmo. Uh, do I have any clips from when I played Phasmo? I sure do. So there's four of them. Uh, these are not, these are ones that I created. You can go by channel. Is there one, say, uh, Dave's Retro Basement? Make sure you follow Dave um, and you can click on those and then find ones of that channel that you have created. Uh, the clips of your channel, you can only do it by category, obviously, because they're your channel, so it doesn't need that. Um, but that's a way to search for specific clips or a range of clips if you want to do like a montage for YouTube or whatever. One thing I want you to point out over the last three sections, you have probably noticed that there is this copyright claims manager notification in the right hand side of the page, especially on video producer and on the clips because it deals with the sections of the videos that are actually viewable by the public. The copyright claims manager is where you would go if this ever changes from you have zero to you have one or two or three. You don't want a copyright claim. One thing I want to point out, and I don't, I don't have any here, um, but on the video producer tab, you may see, like, if you go to one of your things, it may say muted. It'll show muted. And then there will be sections of your video that are muted. And that is because there is a Twitch algorithm that checks every VOD 
for copyrighted content. And if it finds a match based on tone, duration, or name for something it's found online, normally it's things found on YouTube, it will go ahead and, and flag that section and just mute it so that you don't get a copyright claim. You can go in and say, hey, 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 that's not what your bot thought it was. Some human will look at it and go, yeah, you're right, and they'll unmute it for you. That is not the same as a copyright claim. So as long as if you see muted here, it's not really a big deal unless it is copyrighted material. And then you need to correct that in the future broadcasts. Um, because if you do get three copyright strikes, you can be demonetized. If you're not monetized, such as you with a non-affiliate, um, you can have your account terminated. So be careful of that. You don't want to do anything to put your income or your enjoyment of streaming at Jeopardy. The worst thing to do is to use copyrighted material that you don't own the rights to. If that were to happen uh, on accident, which it does happen sometimes, you know, you're playing a game or something happens in the background and your microphone picks it up. Um, you know, so just like a Disney movie. For example, is a big one. They're big sticklers for their stuff, so be careful with the Disney products. Um, that copyright claim comes through. There is a lot of stuff that they have to verify, and I'll cover that uh, in the final section. Uh, but once they have done that and it's been verified, it will show up here. Uh, you also get an email with all the information about it, of course, and then you can fight it or agree to it uh, and all of the information for that will be shown here. You shouldn't ever really get a copyrights claim unless you are dealing specifically with a branded item and using it without permission. Um, you will notice, I mean, let me, I want to, I want to take you to my page real quick just to show you all it takes. So if we go to my channel, we go to my about page. Okay. Um, and then go down to my panels here. I have D DMCA proof. Now these are links and thank yous to everybody for whose music I use with their permission. Of course, you still need to get their permission. Most of the time they'll say, oh, just link back to me or just, you know, shout me out, something like that. Um, some of them can be done in chat with like a bot. Uh, but I have it as a panel. So everybody knows this is where you go if you want to use the same music that I do. Um, and then that's it. I'm covered. So if they ever make a claim, I can go, yeah, right here. I have their permission. They said, you know, and then I have a copy of screenshot of the page where their permission was granted and their requirements, such as a link back to their site or to their specific music file. There it is. I have met those agreements and then I win that copyright challenge. Um, so that's that. Uh, but hopefully you never really have to deal with that. And we'll go back here uh, to the claims manager now. Um, as long as you just be aware of what you're doing. You know what I mean? Um, but again, you only get three strikes. So if you get one, figure out why the fuck you got it and never do that again. Uh, let's move on, though, because we still got a lot to go in the settings. Even though there's only three subsections in here, there's still a lot to talk about. So we're going to move on. Uh, the stream. We've kind of covered this a little bit before, but this is important because this is going to be how you set up your stream to be displayed. And the first thing is your stream key. This stream key is specific and unique to your Twitch channel. Do not ever show it, share it, or send it to anyone at any time under any circumstances ever. You need a stream key to be able to stream from a streaming device such as OBS on your PC, uh, Streamlabs OBS, or whatever they call it now, uh, Stream Elements, the OBS Live, anything like that will need a stream key to connect from that device to your Twitch channel. If I happen to get your stream key, I can put that into my device, I can go live, and I will stream on your channel. And then I will play a whole bunch of Disney things and get you uh, copyright striked and removed, and there's nothing you can do about it because it's on your channel. It's your fault, not mine. So never, ever, ever give your stream key up. 
Nobody will ask for it that matters. Twitch will never ask for it. Um, and then, of course, you can see here, copy. I can copy my stream key without ever looking at it, displaying it, showing it. So hackers or webcam hackers and things like that. And then I can put it in my program. I click paste. Boom, it's done. Click connect and you're good to go. Of course, now we're getting into the version 6 API of Twitch where you don't even need the stream key. You just need the authorization. Um, so if you have my, if you haven't seen, I have a setup uh, video for how to go live on Twitch within 15 minutes. It covers downloading and installing OBS Studio and connecting it to Twitch. And it shows you exactly how to do that without needing the stream key, um, which is great because it actually uses a lot of extra information. You can bring in like your chat and your activity feed and stuff like that from Twitch into OBS directly. So there's a, a lot of benefits to that, and stream keys are probably going to end up going away eventually, but for now they're still there. Don't show them. All right, let's look at the toggles now and our different cho choices that we have. Disconnect prote protection. If something happens, you get a little uh, power surge, or your Wi-Fi goes out, or your internet dips, or whatever, and you lose your connection between your PC and Twitch. With this enabled, Twitch will put up a screen uh, that says you're having difficulties. It's like the little not this way emote and then a little reconnecting symbol. And it will display that for 90 seconds. So it'll keep your stream active and give you a minute and a half to get your shit together, reboot your PC or whatever you got to do and get back to live before you start losing all of your visitors and your viewers. I highly recommend that you leave this one enabled. Um, just because it does give you that minute and a half to kind of reconnect or get your Wi-Fi stable again uh, so that you don't or lose a lot of viewers. Um, however, if you have a lower end PC, you may need to turn this off um, because it does use a major encoder. And basically it's a constant check between your computer and Twitch going, are you live? Are you live? Are you live? Are you live? And it can be really CPU intensive. Um, and it takes like a graphics card de uh, encoder to, to work properly. Um, so if you don't have that, you may want to disable that. Otherwise leave it on. All right. Uh, the mature content, obviously this does not grant you permission to show your naked body, be lewd, rude, uh, or anything that involves sexual activity, threats, or extreme violence. However, if you are geared towards a more mature audience, enable this. If you like to cuss a lot, if you like to joke around with sexual in nature, um, your hot tub streamers, whatever the fuck those people are doing, um, those kind of things, you want to enable this. Um, Twitch is open to people that are 13 or older. Um, and they may not have parents that appreciate your content. And if the kid ends up on it, you can get in a lot of trouble unless you have it enabled. So on a mature content, basically what it does is it will enable a thing over your video that says you agree that this is mature content and you are okay with it. And then you click okay. That's kind of a cover your ass. It's a CYA that says, hey, this kid got upset. His mom's now yelling at Twitch to take me offline because I said fuck 14 times in 37 seconds and she didn't like that. But I protected myself because I have mature content and it's listed and your kid had to click through that to get to see me in the first place. That's on your fault. That's your fault for not watching your kid closer or whatever. Um, basically, but it's just a, a cover your ass for little things like that. Again, it does not give you permission to do things against the terms of service. Uh, so don't click that and then be like, Ooh, I can take, get nude shots. No, you can't. Don't send nudes ever. Okay. The next one is the latency mode. Now, what is latency mode? This is basically a buffering option. Um, and if you know, you have Netflix or Disney Plus or anything like that, you know what buffering is. Basically, the video comes in and your system holds it for a second. And it says, wait, 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 wait. And then it counts how much information is there. And then it says, okay, you know what? I have enough information there. 
Now we can send it on to be viewed while I collect more. And then you collect more. And then it says, okay, now you go through. And that way, if you lose internet for a split second or again, a power outage or whatever, um, it's a delay up to like a couple of minutes in some cases, but usually it's like 10 to 20 seconds worth of buffering up to a few minutes. And then that way you don't notice that there's a lack of anything because it's stored back in the back end and then it's given to you while more is being stored. And then this is given to you while more is being stored and it's a continuous process. Low latency minimizes how much is buffered and it's normally about two to three seconds. So this is what you want in most cases, low latency, because this is when you are interacting with your chat. So if something happens in your game and chat goes, wow, man, that was a good shot. You got a headshot on a guy from 400 meters. Holy crap. That was incredible. You're the greatest of all time ever. Ah! And you see that and you go, yeah, man, I know I'm the greatest ever. This is why I play this game. And while you're here watching me, because I am so cool. That three second buffer allows that to happen in near real time. If you are having internet issues and you need that buffer, you can come in and click on normal latency, which adds between like 30 seconds to 90 seconds of buffering. So now I get my cool headshot. A minute and a half later is when chat actually sees it. And then they say, oh my God, you're the greatest ever. Blah, 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 blah. That was a cool headshot. Meanwhile, you're in the lobby because the game is over and you're like, what fucking headshot are you talking about? And by the time you've responded to that response, it's another minute and a half. So it's not really good for real time communications, which is why low latency is preferred. Normal latency is good if you're doing something that doesn't involve chat. So if like you have chat disabled um, or you're not responding to a chat, like you're doing a cooking stream or you're outside IRL doing something where you're not, oh, I'm actively involved with chat. You can turn normal latency on and it will help the stream run smoother, but it's not great for chat. So balance that with you. All right. The next one is the copyrighted audio warnings. Leave this turned on. When this happens, basically what happens that that remember that bot that checks every VOD for shit I told you about, if that's enabled and they find something, they're going to go, oh, my God, we've got a copyright warning here. Uh, they're going to delete the VOD or block the VOD, unpublish it, and they're not going to let you post any more VODs. And they're going to send you an, an alert a notification that says, dude, some shit just went down and your shit's wrong. You've got big problems. You need to fix them. Basically, this toggle makes Twitch proactive in preventing you from getting a copyright strike. So if something were to happen that would cause a normal copyright strike, it's basically taken offline until you can review and fix it. And then once you do, you're all good to go and everything's back to normal. Make sure that's checked. The VOD settings, like we talked about the VODs, um, the storing past broadcast, you have to enable the VOD feature for them to be. So just because you go live doesn't mean you have a VOD. You have to come here, settings, stream, VOD settings, enable this toggle right here. Always publish a VOD. Yep. We want to, every stream we do, we want it to become a VOD. And again, you can see right here, uh, automatically saves for up to 14 days. It's 60 days for Twitch partners, Twitch Turbo, and Amazon Prime users. So those three. Otherwise, you only get it for two weeks. So again, if you have Amazon Prime account, link it to your Twitch account. Get the extra storage. You're going to thank me later. You can thank me by going to Bearded Inc. on Twitch and using that Prime gift sub that you get every month. A little shameless self-promotion. Anyway. Um, so you always publish, you don't have to always publish a VOD. Um, you can choose whether to, but that's a big pain in the butt. It's easier to go in and delete one or unpublish than it is to add one. So always publish your VODs. You can exclude categories. So again, if you're doing like, again, Fall Guys and, and Fortnite and Dead by Daylight, but then say on Fridays, you want to do a just chatting where you're just going to sit there and talk to your viewers. That's cool. But that may not be vod worthy like nobody's going to go and rewatch you talking to people in the past since they can't interact with that live right so you can come in here and say anytime i do a just chatting right 
boom, we are going to exclude that from becoming a VOD. So everything will be a VOD except when you stream under the just chatting category. And that's done automatically for you. There are reasons to do that. I don't really have any. Um, but again, that like the, the just chatting is an example. You may come up with other reasons. Maybe you don't want your Fortnite play uh, to be a VOD. Maybe you don't want your Fall Guys stuff. I don't know what it is. Whatever your reasoning is, that's how you do it. Quick and easy. Exclude it by category. Um, the clips, again, we want clips of our channel. Clips are probably the one thing that makes Twitch stand out about above any other platform, aside from the extreme popularity at the moment. It's because of clips. Clips, clips, clips are great. You can share them. They're quick little 30 to 60 second snippets of cool things that have happened in your stream, but they have to be enabled. They're not enabled by default. Make sure you come to settings, stream, clip settings, enable this toggle. And now clips can be created from your stream or VODs, both. Okay. And that's very important because you can, you can make a clip live or from a VOD, which is again, if you have your VODs enabled and you are an Amazon prime, you now have 60 days to go back and make clips of your channel to post on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram or wherever you want to do. Again, we have the different things. You can ha exclude clips based on category. I don't know why you would ever do this because you never know when something cool, funny, hip, or amazing is going to happen in your stream, you know? And so if I say, oh, I don't want just chatting again, right? And then you're just chatting and Mr. Beast comes by and donates, you know, $10,000 you would want that as a clip, right? Save forever because that VOD's going to disappear in, in 60 days or whatever. Make a clip of that. So because you never know what's going to happen in your stream, I wouldn't exclude clips from any category. Um, you can say that only followers can make a clip. Um, so not just anybody that happens to be at your stream, they have to follow you. Um, and then you can say any follower. Uh, they have to follow you for 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, up to three months before they can make a clip. I don't, again, don't make it difficult for people to find you or use your services. The easier it is for them to interact with you, the longer they will stay interacting with you. Don't make it difficult. You're going to just push people away. Okay. Uh, and then subscriber only. So if you only want your subscribers to be able to make clips of your channel, which I don't know why you would ever do that, you can enable this toggle here. And there you go. Okay, let's move on. We still got a lot to go. Permissions. Uh, remember, I talked about editors as one of the um, roles earlier, right? Uh, people can make you a manager or an editor of their channel. And when you do, you'll see those channels here. So these will be the ones that you have the editor role. And once you have that editor role, you can come here, click on their thing, and that's where you access their dashboard panel through your editor window, which is very, very bad. Don't ever do that. Um, and then people who can stream to your channel. If you don't want to give somebody your primary stream key, which you do not ever want to do, you can come down here. Um, you can come here, you can give an email address and you can send them an invite and Twitch will create their own stream key that also links to your account. Again, I don't know why you would want to do this. Roommates, maybe uh, a husband and wife team or a partnered team that, you know, one goes live on Monday, one goes live on Tuesday. They both go live together on Wednesday, but they only want to have one account. Um, this is how you would set that up. I don't, again, if you're using one computer, it doesn't really matter, um, but it is there. So if you want somebody to be able to stream through your channel, uh, this is where you would do that. And Twitch will handle all of that. They will send them an email with the full instructions, their own stream key on how to set it up, their program. Um, and then all you have to do is enable it. And then once they are there, and then if you have a falling out and the divorce finally goes final, you can take away their permission here uh, by clicking on their name. 
Raids. Raids are another big part of Twitch, I am sure you are aware, and that is when you or another streamer takes their eyes and says, I'm ending my stream, but before we go, we are all going to go as a group over to watch this streamer. And then you come in. Raids are exciting, and they're great when you get them, and they come in, and you're like, oh my god, thank you so much for the raid. It only happens if you allow it, okay? So if you're not getting raided, come in here, settings, stream, scroll down to raids, and make sure that you do not have raids blocked or only raids from teammates and follow channels. You want to allow all raids. Now, if you don't want to allow all raids, that's fine. Um, especially with last year's big hate raid thing going on. Um, this was kind of Twitch's answer to it. Um, so you can only allow raids from teammates if you are on a, a team um, or from channels that you follow. Notice you follow. Not that follow you. Okay, a big difference. Or you can block all raids. For the most part, the hate raid thing is basically over. I know some people are still having a small issue with it. Um, but it's real quick and easy to ban and delete people, especially if you have a good mod or a good bot. And we don't want to block raids from people that may be looking to raid a fellow streamer or a smaller streamer that they don't know yet you know and if i gotta raid somebody that is following me that's gonna drastically limit who i can possibly raid um so think about it if it appeals to you leave all raids on you're probably not gonna have that big of an issue with it anymore uh and then the final thing on the stream section is the drops there will be a toggle here once you stream for the first time it says enable drops You'll want to enable that. And we're going to cover drops, as you can see down here in the viewer rewards section later on uh, in the next part. But remember this part, and I'll remind you then to this section uh, will have a toggle that you can click on. Moving forward onto the channel section may look really familiar. We've been here before, right? Yes, we have. Um, but we're also going to talk about it now. I'm not going to cover the about section anymore because we've done that now three times but this is where it's at uh the branding though we are going to cover branding once again here's another option to change your profile picture that makes four places um and you can pick your profile accent color now as you can see this is the accent color around the edges of your video player your panels when they hovered over and they kind of pop up or the edge of your screen when viewed on the mobile app or the web browser. You can change that color. Here's some predefined colors that you can pick. Or if you know your hex code, you can click on it. Uh, you can type it in. So if I want like a gray, all right, I can do a nine and nine and nine. And there's like a gray color. I can also do all C's, right? That's another lighter gray color, whatever you like. Um, if you want all blues and reds, you know, you can uh, make up your own, whatever. Default to the Twitch purple is always there. Um, but make sure you click Save Changes. As you can see, I need to save that. And there, now it'll be this blue color. Uh, the profile banner. This repeating my name or your username thing background is the default. If you want to change that, and again, this is what, let me show you. This is what appears behind here. So here you see the, Robot bearded, robot bearded, robot bearded, all back there, right? Here's the highlight color on the about section. The highlight color is blue, so this is blue. You can't really see it now, um, but it will appear around all of these little things. Um, but this back here, this is your profile banner. So we're on my profile page. This is my profile banner. This is what we want to change if you want to change it. Um, notice. It does recommend a size of 1200 by 480, which is a really weird rectangle. Um, so it's not like your normal size, it's not like a YouTube background or a, a Facebook background. Um, and you only get JPEG, PNG, or GIF. The GIF ones are not animated. Okay, so it'll only be the first frame. If you do an animated GIF, keep that in mind. Um, but here's where you would do it you can click upload pick the image, and then save. Uh, the player banner, this is what displays. So if I were to go here and show you my channel, 
and there's my chat. I'm offline, right? And if I get rid of all this, this back here, it's all black, right? You see that? That's because I don't have a video player banner. But back here on my video player is right here, but I'm offline. I'm not playing, I'm not live. And so this is where it would be. Now, let me show you one. My, my main page, whoops, has one. Uh, so let's just go to my channel. And then there's my profile banner, right? The background one. But if I go to, uh, open, let's open chat. And there's my chat. Okay. Uh, and then I close all this. Here's my offline banner. So when I'm offline, this is what you would see on the mobile app. Or if you come here and you open up chat um, and everything, this is where you would go. And, and this is what you would see. And this is the difference between the profile banner and the video player banner. The video player banner, again, is the one, your offline image. So why have two different ones? Well, the um, pro, the profile banner, the background is also shown on your followers list. So when, when remember, if you remember on our community, we had our followers list. Here's the background, right? Here's the background. This is your profile banner. As you can see, it's not my offline image. It's my profile image. So a lot of people use these and they'll also have like, they'll have, you know, frame it up so that their streaming schedule is shown on here, things like that. Um, so depending on how you want to handle that, I only have mine set up on my main page. When we go back to my main page, um, there, so that it shows my running man and my name at the bottom here. Um, I don't worry about it because it is covered up by all of this other stuff, right? So I'm not going to make it too wild and crazy. Uh, right. Channel. Brand. There we go. Now we're back. So that's the difference between the video player banner and the profile banner, uh, just so you know. But you can upload both of those right here. Now, the schedule is another important thing. Um, this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, you can create a schedule. Uh, and then again, this is new as of May 2022, that the time zone is localized. So when your viewers look at your schedule, they will see the time when you are going live or whatever in their local time. And when you create the schedule, it is in your local time, which is a nice touch because then you don't have to go, oh, I'm streaming at 9 p.m. my time, which is going to be 6 a.m. your time, uh, whatever. Uh, so to make a schedule, though, we're going to add a stream. You're going to give it a title. This is, title and category is all optional, but highly recommended. So uh, let's say that we're going to do a uh, horror games this week oh you know whatever and we're gonna play phasmo i guess i don't know i'm just whatever comes to the top of my head and so that's the category the game or the category just chatting whatever it is uh the time here is the time that you plan to start okay and it comes in 30 minute increments and goes around the clock uh from a.m to p.m so let's say i want to start at 9 a.m i would scroll here and I'm going to start at 9 a.m. Okay. And then how long do I want to stream for? I want to stream for hours and minutes. And this is important. They are separate. So let's say I only want to go for, I want to go four and a half hours. Cool. I go four hours here, 15, 30, 45 minutes here. So we're going to go four and a half hours from 9 a.m. Right. So that's going to be 10, 11, 12, 1 30 in the afternoon. And we're going to do this every look at Tuesday. Now, you see that the save change once I did the time and the frequency. And notice the frequency is only, you can only pick one day. You can't pick like, I'm going to do this every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So if you are going to do it every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you want to come down here and check add another. And then you click save. And this is going to save the stream. For that schedule but it's going to leave this pop-up open and now i can also do it on wednesday save and i can do it on monday and i already have a stream scheduled so you're going to get that alert but i can do it on monday and save and then when you're done then you can just close it out and then as you can see horror games this week right fast 9 to 1 30 and that's my time now if i were to change my time zone to like argentina or 
London, it would say that time or those time zones. Um, and then you can do that for every day of the week or wherever you are. Uh, if you decide, you know what, I'm not going to stream this week, you come in here, click on vacation mode. We're going to start today. We're going to end it in a week. Save that. And then my schedule is going to say, here's what he would have played, but we're on vacation. Come back on this day. And then, of course, you can delete. You're like, ah, the schedule is not working for me. I want to create a new one. Delete the entire schedule. Yes. And then it starts all over blank. Now, once you have a schedule, you can export it to your calendar of choice. If you use the Google Calendar, you just click on this button and it'll send it out. And then you can share that Google Calendar anywhere you like. Uh, if you're on iOS, um, Outlook, Thunderbird, or any other calendar program, I even think Calendy and some of the other ones out there uses, uh, it uses the WebCal API. Uh, you just get this, click this link. It'll link to your created schedule, and then you can post that on your devices there to get the schedule anywhere else you need. Um, and that, that's basically it for the schedule. So the featured content is the last tab on the channels tab, and we're going to cover that now. So now we're going to talk about the featured content. Now, featured content is when you're on your main page, and I'm going to go back here. Let's go back to my main page. Um, you can see here, Robot Bearded suggests these streamers. Of course, it's going to suggest me, Bearded Inc., right? Um, I don't have any live videos to display, but I can show you on my main page. Here we go. I have, um, whoops, I have my videos. I have my recently streamed categories. I have my suggested streamers, that kind of thing. Um, and what happens is this is all featured content. So, auto host. If you don't know, you can host other channels. And if you're a non-affiliate, hosting is great because those hosted views actually go towards your average view to become an affiliate. Um, and then, so you want to, you want yes, I want to auto host channels. That means if you're offline and you have channels in your auto host list, which we will cover in just a second, and that person goes live, your channel and people coming to your channel can watch the other streamer through your channel. So you're hosting them like, I'm not using my TV, you use it, basically, right? Um, and then the auto host priority will display channels in an order personalized to each viewer, or the preferred method is to display channels in the order they appear in the list. And we're going to get to that list in a moment, um, which is actually next. But you're going to have a list of viewers that you can add to your auto host. Uh, and then you can either say, show them in this order. So if two of them are live, for example, at the same time, your auto host will show the first one in the list, basically is what it is. Um, so here, my auto host list only contains bearded ink, but you remember our good friend Disney. Uh, I can spell Disney Dork 222. This is her. We can add her to the auto host list. She's added now. Um, we can come in here and we can add assorted marbles because he's a great guy, does my uh, binaural beats uh, sounds here on YouTube. So check that out. Um, but then you see how when I hover over them, my cursor changes to the four point arrow. It means I can drag them around. This is the auto host list order that it's talking about. So if I move assorted marbles above Disney Dork now, when Bearded Ink is not live and Robot Bearded, which is this account, is not live and assorted marbles goes live, then they're going to show assorted marbles stream right here in this video player automatically. I don't have to do anything. But if Disney's live and assorted marbles is not live, then they're going to show Disney stream right here which is great. But if they're both live, then it's going to show in order of this list. So which means assorted marbles in this case would be shown over Disney. And that's what these two buttons do. So display channel in order on the list that they appear, the way they appear on the list, check that, boom, done, you're good to go. You can add as many as you want. I don't suggest you do more than like five or six at a time. Uh, just because it keeps things compact and simple. Um, 
So your recently streamed categories, again, if we look at my main page, um, you can see that I have those. Here you go, Phasmo, Ghost X, Don't Knock Twice, Malum. Uh, we got some back rooms, Elder Scrolls. They, it, it fills up the screen. So if my screen's smaller, it's only going to show four, five, whatever it is. Um, but we're going to go back here. So this will populate once you start streaming, and every category that you stream in will have one listed here you can actually remove them. So if you don't want people to know that I streamed in, you know, where to go? I streamed Malum the other day, right? And it was a one-time thing and I really hated the game and, oh, I'm never going to do that again. But it's going to be there until I knock it off the list. No, you can come here, click on it, delete it from the list. It won't be there anymore. The streamer shelf, that is this thing here where it shows who I suggest. That's my streamer shelf, and those little sections are called shelves. Now you know. Um, it can be your auto host list, your team members, or disabled completely. If you're not on a team, leave it on auto host. And then again, there's an edit, and that takes you back and to your auto host list that we got up here. Um, but just make sure you save after everything you do. Save, save there. And now we're done with that. We're going to go to the final section for part three. And that is we're going to go to the settings and moderation. This is a single page. Uh, but it is a lot going on. There's a lot of things, a lot of toggles. So let's go over it quickly. Uh, the auto mod. Heh, if you are a streamer on Twitch and you do not have a chat bot, whether it be Nightbot, Mix It Up Bot, Streamer Dot Bot, the Stream Elements or Stream Labs chat bots that come, then you need Auto Mod. But I highly recommend that you do not use Auto Mod. The thing is sensitive, 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 like a newborn baby. Very, very sensitive. It cries at everything. Um, so as you can see here, my level is zero. Auto Mod is off. I recommend that you play around with it to get to know it, but you're going to soon see that auto mod holds chat messages more often than it should. And you're going to, you or your actual mods are going to spend more time dealing with auto mod than you are with your chat. It's a big pain in the butt, but if you don't have anything else, it's better than nothing. Um, so you can select what, uh, you're, you can turn it on and basically it looks for keywords, bad words, links, that kind of thing. Like, Hey, um, I have known it to automatically block the word bacon before. So again, you're going to spend more time dealing with auto mod than you will with anything else. If you need it, you need it. So you can block terms. You can enter words like, I don't want the word, you know, vagina to be used in my chat or eggs benedict or bacon i guess apparently you can type that in right and you add it to the block terms so now anytime anyone uses bacon in robot bearded's chat it will not display auto mode will block it and it'll show up as dots okay and then of course you make a mistake oh i'm see i'm just kidding People can talk about bacon. You can delete it, edit it, whatever. Same thing with the permitted terms. So if you know auto mod is blocking bacon for whatever fucking reason, you can come in here and say, no, auto mod, bacon is okay. We can talk about bacon. Uh, and then if you're like, oh, you know what? No, I made a mistake. I realize that bacon is now something else and you're smarter than me because you're an auto mod and I'm just a human. I'm not a lowly AI. Uh, you were right. I can delete that. Um, but that's basically what those do. You should never have to use them if you have a mod, uh, a bot that's worth a damn. Then you can leave this off. The suspicious user control. I have mine on level two. Level two is a default level. This is it blocks possible and likely evaders. Uh, this is like your spam bots and your you want to become famous and all those. Um, anybody that has anything on their computer that tries to evade ban detection will automatically be banned um, and things like that. So level two is a great level to have it on, which means likely evaders are restricted. 
possible evaders are monitored. You can change those and it'll change that level. But again, level two is good enough. And once again, if you ban people, their lightning will show up here. You can also come in here after a stream and go, you know what, Disney Dork, she was just a real pain in the butt today. I'm going to ban her. And you can type her name in there. Uh, don't ban Disney Dork. She's really great. Moving on. The chat options. In your chat, you can block hyperlinks. Now, remember, we had our VIPs in the role manager. Remember what I told you about VIPs? VIPs can always post links, even if this is on. So be careful who you make a VIP and make sure that they understand that they have the ability to post links, but not to abuse it. Um, so this again, and it tells you right here, channels chat will automatically delete posted URLs except for ones posted by you, your moderators, any admins, and of course the VIPs. Uh, and then you can do the non-mod chat delay. Basically, if you are having a very busy chat, uh, and you're, you have a human moderator that's looking for keywords and things. You go, oh, you need extra time to handle that. So you come in here and give them two, four, or six seconds. And basically, when somebody chats in your chat window, they check, you're a douche and your gameplay is horrible. Suck my dick. And they hit send. It's actually captured and held. And only you and the moderator can see that message for however long you have in this drop down, two, four, six seconds. And that gives the mod enough time to go, oh, no, 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 delete that message uh, or allow it and it'll go through uh, if your mods really hate you. Um, but basically, yeah, they, they, that gives them more time for the suspicious uh, chats to get before the rest of your chat sees it. Okay. So the channel privileges is actually a big one. This is new as like January, February is when they started doing this. It was part of their answer to the big hate raid thing that was going on. Um, but default is to turn everything on for everybody. And it's a real big pain in the ass. Again, especially for a non-affiliate. If you are worried about the hate raids and the hate speech and the, the, the bad people that are out there in the world every day around you coming to your Twitch channel, there are better ways to handle it. What you do in Twitch should be simple, easily accessible, and inviting at all times. If you want to prevent those other things from happening there are better things out there to do night bot streamer bot any of your bots a human moderator these things are 10 times better than anything built into twitch so just be careful um i'm going to tell you right now you do have the ability to turn on follower only chat which means people have to follow you before they can say hi in your chat if you have this enabled, disable your Twitch account and go get another hobby. Um, we're going to cover it in just a moment where this thing is. But if you enable this feature, you're not welcoming. You don't want people to chat with you. You are here for numbers or to be by yourself. And either way, it's not good. So. With the channel privileges and my little soapbox rant over ish, um, you do want to verify. Now, remember when we were setting up earlier and we, we, we covered up that you can have multiple accounts made from either your phone number or your email address. Remember how email address was mandatory. That is because everybody that has a Twitch account must have a verified email. Everybody, it, it, you have to. So on the chat verification, all chatters must have verified email. Click that. Yes, because otherwise it's not a real Twitch account or it's a bot. And if they don't have a verified email, they're not real, right? So block them. Phone verification is optional. I don't have to link my phone to Twitch. I choose to, but I don't have to. Not a lot of people do. 
some people don't even have a phone that is capable of linking to a Twitch account, right? Uh, or they don't have their permission from their parents or whoever owns that phone. So why would you prevent that person from being able to come into your chat and hang out with you just because you're scared they may potentially one day be hateful, right? So no, phone number verification left off. Now, if you do these two, email on for all chatters, phone number off for all chatters, you're golden, okay? You know how many hate raids and bad things and uh, the, because I am an LGBTQ uh, ally that I get on a daily basis? None. None because I have other things that control that for me, right? And you can too, uh, for free. And we'll cover those in other tutorials. But you want to make it as simple as possible for somebody to find your channel and go, hey, let me say hello to this person. And if you have to make them go and, and verify their phone and verify their email, which they should have already done, um, and jump through all these hoops, they're not going to for you. They're not. You're not Ninja. You're not, you know, these high-end streamers. You're not Pokimane, okay? They're not going to do all of this shit for you. They're going to go, I'm going to find somebody else. Make it as easy as possible for people to come and say hello to you. That's it. That's your only goal. Now, if you decide you want to do all this shit, you can exempt your subscribers, your VIPs and moderators. Um, but let's just leave all this. Just like I said, all chatter email on no chatter for phone verification. You're done. The chat rules. This is what you have when somebody does come to your chat. The first time that they click on that chat link and you're, it's going to pop up and say, do you agree to these rules? Keep them short, keep them sweet. Nobody wants a big giant fucking wall the size of their screen full of rules of what they can and cannot do in your chat. People know how to use a chat. People have been using chat since AOL back before probably you were born. Okay. Short, simple. Don't be a dick. Follow my rules that are on my page. Be nice to everybody. Don't backseat. Don't tell me how to play a game. Pick two of those. Go with it, right? So we're going to go here. Don't be a dick, right? Say hello and be friendly. Save. That's our rules. That's it. Because you can ban anybody, okay? So now when I go to my page and I go to click on chat, that's going to come up and people are going to have to say, don't be a dick, say hello and be friendly. Okay, before they can chat. That's the only blockade they should have between saying hello to you and leaving, right? Follower only and all that bullshit. Ugh. Now, once we've got the chat rules established, you can have unban requests. Turn this on. Enable it because if you ban somebody, you want them to be able to have the ability to give you their side of the story. And this is how they do that. Once somebody has been banned, they will have the opportunity to say, hey, this is what happened. This is what I meant. I'm sorry, blah, 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 whatever, whatever their reasoning or excuses are. Uh, and then you can choose to ignore them and keep the ban in place or accept the uh, unban request and unban that person and allow them back into your chat. The cool down period. Uh, you can choose how many minutes, hours, days, or even months before they are able to send you that unban request. I think it defaults to like a minute. Set it to 10 or 15 minutes. You want these people to be able, oh my God, I just got banned. They're going to be so mad. And their unban request is going to be like full of fuck you, you stupid fuck. Right? You don't want that. Give them time to take a breath. Go somewhere else on Twitch have a breather, get a drink, go pee, come back and go, you know what? I see why he unbanned me. Let me send him a message saying I'm sorry. Or he was totally wrong. He got the wrong idea. Let me try to explain it. And give him that time to cool down so that their unbanned request is actually 
well thought out and can be approved or not. Followers only mode. Leave this off. If you turn it on, if you turn it on to followers and set it to any of these dates and times, close down this video and leave. Bye. I don't miss you. Okay. Moving on. Moderator tools in chat. This is a private thing. This is for your moderators. When they are in chat, if you have this enabled, they can use the timeout, the ban. Um, they can view the chat and ban histories and all that right on their screen. And they don't have to enter anything extra. They don't have to go to a different link or anything like that. It's all right there. If you have moderators or you are a moderator, enable this on your thing and enjoy life. Okay, so that covers the settings section. In the next part, part four, we're going to cover viewer rewards through the end and in this little story. Uh, we, I told you there's a lot, right? So we're going to jump right into it, but make sure you check out the links below to make sure you get to all the parts. We're on part three now, moving to part four, and I will see you over there.